Welcome back to our talk on the stress tensor. In this video, I want to show you some examples of stress tensors. But first, I want you to learn some very basic, yet very important concepts when it comes to stresses. First, any time a stress component is positive, we will draw the stress component pushing outwards and we will call it a tensile stress. When the stress component is negative, however, we will draw the stress component pushing inwards and we will call it a compressive stress. Second, also note that when I equals J, such as in sigma 1, 1, 2, 2, or 3, 3, we are dealing with a normal or direct stress that goes on the diagonal. When the stress component has different indices, that is, I does not equal J, such as in sigma 1, 2, we are dealing with shear stresses that go on the off diagonal. Okay. Now this is the most basic example of stress. The uniaxial stress will consider stress in only one direction and on only one face. As a result, the stress tensor will only have one component and everything else will be zero. You can easily calculate this one component if you know the force applied and the area over which the force is applied. Plane stress is quite literally what the name says, stress on a plane. In this example, I will show you that we can deal with stress that is only non-zero in two directions instead of three, such that we ignore, in this case, the components of stress that have an index associated with the z-direction. By drawing these stress components on the x-face and on the y-face, we also end up ignoring the z-face or z-traction. Knowing the z-face and z-traction are ignored, it is quite easy to write out the stress tensor now we end up with only four components. A non-plane stress would involve traction on all faces. A simple example includes normal forces acting on each face. They can either be acting inwards or outwards, but remember that you must account for that in the stress definition, which can be tensile or compressive. Since these are all normal, all shear stress components are zero. The normal components will be sigma 1, 1, sigma 2, 2, and sigma 3, 3. Having the corresponding forces and areas, you can solve for these stress components using the simple stress relationship of force over area. Remember that if one of the forces flip, like F3, you must account for that in the stress formula. Let's talk about hydrostatic stress now. This one is a little more fun. Imagine a balloon filled with air. There is pressure acting from inside the balloon. A stress tensor of an elemental cube of air inside the balloon will have three diagonal components. All these components will be negative because the pressure is crushing this elemental cube. So the components represent compressive stress. However, you may actually want to write out the stress tensor for a portion of the membrane of this balloon because maybe the balloon represents a lung or better yet, an alveolar sac. In this case, the pressure from inside the balloon is causing the membrane to stretch. We can then consider the tension applied along the membrane as well as the tension against the pressure and with the pressure. Since these tensions are all normal to the surface, we know they will be normal or direct stresses. The shear stresses are all zero. We can then fill in the normal stresses, which are T along X, T along Y, and P, which is negative and is along Z. Okay, this is all for now. I will see you next time.